Hey you guys, today I'm here with Kim. She is the owner of Smart Face and we did permanent makeup powder brows. So really I'm just gonna do a quick interview and get the rundown on the difference between powder brows and microblading, um, what to expect with your eyebrows and kind of how to keep them lasting yeah. really long. So what's the difference between microblading and powder brows? So um, a lot, microblading is um, is the hair stroke technique and it's done with a hand tool. So it's essentially a blade dipped in pigment and then the, the pigment is scratched into the skin to create uh, what looks like hair. So powder brows is not going to look like hair, it's going to look like you lightly just dust it on some um, pencil powder whatever you put on your eyebrows. And it's done by a machine with a needle configuration to look just like dusted on makeup. Okay. So totally different looks, totally different techniques. So then how would you decide who gets which one? So personally, I honestly am doing mostly powder brow on most people. I feel like it ages well. It's the least invasive, but uh, specific skin types cannot have microblading. In my opinion, for example, oily skin, oh. um, severe sun damage, um, sensitive skin, very red skin, uh, or large pores. But all of those skin types can have powder brows because it's less invasive. So there's just less trauma to the skin. Um, I'm, I prefer powder across the board now. Okay. Do you ever do a combo where it's like powder and microblading? I do. I think it's really pretty, um, but I don't necessarily microblade any longer. I'm doing nano strokes. So okay. um, no blade, needle to draw on the hair strokes. So again, it's less invasive, but you'll get that fluffy hair look. And then you just powder in the rest of the brow. Okay. Oh, neat. So, does one last longer than the other? Oh, yes and no. It depends on it depends on the skin. So, um, there's no way to guarantee how long it will last. So, it depends on what the person's using on their skin, their age, their skin type, uh, skin texture, oily, dry, all of that. So, typically, I would say powder brow will last longer, but you're always going to have that person who microblading will last longer than powder. Okay. It depends. But on average, powder brow will last longer in the skin without needing to be um, redone. Oh, interesting. What is the healing process and then how long does it last? Like, do you need touch-ups? Yeah, so I feel like every answer is going to be dependent on the person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't find all of my clients need to touch up with powder brows. Um, microblading, usually they will. Um, I would say 70% of my clients don't need a touch up at all. They're fine for about a year, year and a half. Um, okay, so a touch up is when you have to come back in a few weeks and do mm, it? Yeah, or, so okay. the soonest you can do a touch up is six weeks for young, healthy skin. If you're a little older and sensitive, eight weeks. Um, and what that looks like is, let's say, a little tiny spot didn't heal well or you lost pigment here. It's just literally a quick little uh, enhancement. Okay. Of, now when you're coming back in a year to get your color boost, that's when you're redoing the whole brow because it does fade. All permanent makeup will need um, to be enhanced at some point. Mm -hmm. So some people will need it at six weeks, some people will need it at two years. It's just totally dependent on the way the body heals, what you're using at home. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, typically about a year is how long okay. you can go before you need like a full redo. Is the healing time the same for powder brows and microblading? Um, typically, yeah. You're going to have two weeks of aftercare where you're just washing and applying ointment, no makeup, no sweating, uh, no sauna, swimming, things like that. Two weeks where you have to be very diligent. Powder brows, microblading, ombre brows, all of it. Um, after two weeks, you're, you're topically healed, and then up to six weeks is the full healing process. So. Again, it depends on the person, but you'll have two weeks of aftercare and then four to six weeks of full healing. Okay. Um, and that's the same for all the techniques. Okay, that's cool. Because when we were talking, you were saying that usually it gets darker and then lighter, mm -hmm. and sometimes at like week three, people are like saying it's completely gone uh -huh. and it's like skin grew over. Yeah. yeah, so what happens is um, in the next the two, three, four days after the treatment, um, the pigment will oxidize in the skin, you have uh, red blood cells, and then the skin's wounded. So you will have darkening of the skin, darkening of the pigment, so a lot of people will feel like they're just darker and they can be. Um, and then they start to flake, exfoliate, and then um, sometimes they get really light and patchy. 
that's why I say in about six weeks they're fully healed so you know what will be left. Um, the skin sometimes will grow a new layer of skin over and that needs to naturally exfoliate before you know what's, what's what. So that's why we say two weeks of um, active healing and then up to six weeks to really? see full results. Okay. So like don't do it three weeks before your wedding. Don't do it three weeks before anything. <laughs> <laughs> got before any of it, no. <laughs> okay. So you were saying that there's like pre-care that you need to do before your appointment. Yeah. So what is that? Um, you need to be off uh, blood thinning medications. Um, so that's like aspirin? Yeah. So no aspirin, no ibuprofen. Um, I like to have my clients off of it for 48 hours. Everybody's different. Now if it's prescription, we can't tell you to stay off of it. You have to get a doctor's release. Um, no omega fatty acids, so like no fish oil supplements, no um, turmeric supplements, sometimes that will thin the blood. Uh, alcohol, no alcohol, 24 hours okay. in advance, and uh, no retin-A, retinol, or glycolic acid. Um, I like a week off of that. But okay. um, yeah, and then try not to have too much caffeine in the morning of, but other than that, that's those are the biggies. Okay, so you were saying that there's the touch-up and then there's maintenance. So every year or two years, people come back and get it redone? Yeah, typically. Okay. So people ask me, when do I need to come back? And I tell them, come back when they're just not looking as vibrant as you want or you're starting to notice even fading. Mm -hmm. um, on average, that's about a year to a year and a half. Okay. For powder brows. Um, microblading might be a little sooner. Um, you'll just know when you're not seeing the full vibrant color and they're not looking as crisp and as um as vibrant as you want then you can come back you can touch them up yeah okay so do they turn red over time like the old face makeup tattoo they kind of turn there's red. always okay so there's no guarantees with permanent makeup you just can't guarantee what the future will hold typically now permanent cosmetic ink has come such a long way that it's not typical that that will happen it could it, it's just not typical anymore so um yeah, permanent cosmetic ink has come a very long way. I use pigments that are modified um, to prevent that. Um, so long as you're choosing the right color for your client, that shouldn't happen. And how do you choose the right color? Um, and you have to match the eyebrow hair. So, um, so like for me, it'd be like black. Well, yeah, you would have dark. You would have dark brows. So <laughs> yeah. So you have to take into consideration their skin tone. Um, are they warm, cool, or neutral? Mm -hmm. And then the natural eyebrow hair. So all the time, blondes come in and they want darker eyebrows. So if you want darker tattoo, you're going to have to tint your brows. Mm -hmm. um, because if you have one color hair and your tattoo is different, it just doesn't... Oh, like the blonde on top of the dark? Yeah, yeah it just yeah. looks fuzzy and it's not pretty. So that's another thing. You'd have to tint them and then there's maintenance all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, brow hair match and skin tone. Okay. That's how you choose the pigment. Okay. And then can you remove it if you hate it? Ooh. Yes, you can remove it. It's an, it's not. I do removal actually. It's a saline solution um, tattooed into the skin. It's a bloody process. It's not pretty. So you have to be very confident that you want permanent makeup. Be confident in your artist and be very clear on what you want. Mm -hmm. um, somebody can't talk you into this. You know, I have a lot of people who come in like, oh, my sister said I needed brows from you. Like, do you want brows? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, are you sure yeah. you want this? You can remove it, and I do remove a lot of bad permanent makeup. But like other people, it is, like come it, back to you. It, and, it takes a long time. Yeah. So it's multiple, multiple sessions. It's scabby. It's bloody. So just be very sure of your microblading, permanent makeup, powder mm -hmm. brow artist because removal sucks. It just sucks. Yeah. So how would you it's pick an artist? Like if you didn't live in San Diego, because obviously mm -hmm. if you live in San Diego, you go here. Yeah. But <laughs> like if you um, don't, what, what would you look for? I would look for training. Um, there are so many one, two day classes for these techniques. So you want to know where your artist was trained, who trained them, how many hours they have, um, how many clients they've done. Uh, you want to see healed work. Mm -hmm. So not only the photos that they post that are beautiful right after, but healed results. Um, and then you also want to make sure that they are um, following and that they're compliant with the, the local health department. So um, their info needs to be posted on their walls. They need to have um, all the info ready for you. So um, other than that, um, style, everybody has their own style. Mm -hmm. So when my clients come in, we talk about my personal style. I'm very conservative. Um, just make sure that it kind of matches if you if somebody comes in you know wanting something that i don't feel would flatter them i just won't do it um so questions just ask a lot of questions mm -hmm. i like that how during the consultation because we did a consultation before we actually did the appointment on annie and 
you drew them out and you said, this is what you're going to look like. Yeah. Like, and you powdered them important. in. And well, I like to, I freehand my brow design. I've been a brow artist for, I mean, I've been doing brows for 13 years. So oh, wow. I like to free design, freehand design. Okay. Based on your bone structure and where you grow hair. So her little brow bone in there starts to kind of curve right there. So, and she's got some growth here. So I would definitely kind of bring that brow out a little. Now, a lot of, a lot of people want um, their brows, let's say, for example, if it bothered her that her brow started here and she wanted her brow all the way out to here, there's no, I wouldn't do that much tattooing. So we do have to stay within her hair. Yeah, so ideal, I mean, you could start it here, but she doesn't have enough hair to blend. So I'm going to start it here. Mm -hmm. And her curves out here. Your arch is in the right spot for sure. And that's where her arch naturally is, so I'm really not going to mess with it. I, what I look for is like what I call linkage in the eyebrow, where the hairs really connect and there's no fuzzy disconnection. So you have like your natural shape. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. Um, orange. This one a little more so than this one. So here you can see that there's kind of a, like it's sparse here, but I can see really tight linkage here. So that tells me that we can really kind of pull that across and it'll blend. Yeah, that's important. I try to give a realistic expectation of what you can expect uh, during and before and healed after. Um, and I tell you what will look the best on your face for your, you know, your bone structure and your hair. Um, so, and a lot of people bring in photos, well, I want this eyebrow, and if it's just not something that will look natural on you, just, it's managing expectations, too. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You have to manage the expectations and know that I'll never put something on your face that won't look flattering, regardless of what's trendy, you right. know? Yeah. So, yeah. if you want really crazy brows, don't so. come here. <laughs> Do you need to grow your eyebrows out before you come in? Um, it depends. So, I'll typically ask for a photo of the brow so I can see and I'll tell someone if they need to grow in their eyebrow. Um, if somebody's way over tweezed, like a lot of people have like a really over rounded brow or have just tweezed the brow to death, I'll ask for about four to six weeks of growth so that I can see actually where the hairs will grow um, because they can come in and not have hair and I'll think it goes here but then their hair grows in and it's it's, like, <laughs> it's growing all over. So yeah. I don't like to tattoo where there's not natural hair growth. So I do like to see growth. Um, shaping them, um, that also depends. So if somebody has, like if you came in, like your shape is very structured and defined. I wouldn't have to have your brows shaped up. But if somebody comes in with just crazy, no cohesive shape, mm -hmm. then I'll, I'll wax their brows about five days before. Okay. Or I'll tweeze them or I'll shape them. I want to do it myself. Um, so five days before. So do you always do a consultation before the first appointment? Um, there's always a consultation. It's not always separate. Okay. So, so you could do same day treatment. You can do same day. Like did all, mm -hmm. all the rules, like no yeah. acids, no retin-A, yeah. all that. Okay. Yep, exactly. Cool. Okay, so after you get your brows done, like what is the aftercare? Aftercare is pretty simple. Um, now I'm speaking for powder brow. Microblading is different. Um, oh, okay. So microblading, you just... You, Everybody has their own technique, so we'll just kind of talk powder brow because that's what I do the most of. Um, you're going to blot your eyebrows for every 30 minutes for about two and a half hours after the treatment. Okay. And after that, you do nothing for a full 24 hours, and then you're just going to wash them twice a day with antibacterial soap, and then I'll give you ointment to take home. So I provide you with After Inked. It's designed for permanent makeup to help heal. Um, after Inked? After okay. Inked, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's really good stuff. So uh, I give you that to take home, and then you just do that twice a day after you wash your brows. That's okay. it. It's you definitely don't want to take hot steamy showers. You don't you can't sweat or heavily exercise. Um but yeah, it's okay to shower as normal. You just don't want to stand and like get the water you know all over your face. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's super they're super easy to take care of. So is it painful? Uh I <laughs> it depends on the person and your pain tolerance. Um I numb my clients. Um from what I see, no, it's not painful. Most of my clients are asleep, mm -hmm. so I have to wake them up. Um, I would say some people will say they feel a little discomfort, but I would not say painful, no. Yeah. Um, 
I like your process because what she does is she takes the tattoo. Do you call it a tattoo gun? It's a tattoo gun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so she takes the tattoo gun and runs it over the brow first, which opens up the skin, yeah. and then she pats on it's the lidocaine. Yeah, it's lidocaine epinephrine. So once the skin's broken, just barely graze the surface of the skin, just enough to get the pig, uh, the numbing agent in. You start to numb right away, and yeah. after a couple minutes should be comfortable and every pass I do I wipe the pigment and then reapply numbing so I continually make sure that you're comfortable um, but even the first initial scratching of the skin most people say it's not comfortable uncomfortable it's not uh, most people say it's not uncomfortable <laughs> okay so is there a risk of scar tissue um not if done properly no not with powder brows um Microblading can build up scar tissue over time. You can only do it a few times. Powder brow, there's no, no scarring, no scar tissue. Okay. Because it's not going as deep. Yeah, so it's not it's as invasive. Like... It's very superficial. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. And then how much does it cost? Uh, three ninety nine. So each session is each new session is three ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Touch ups are one hundred dollars between six and twelve weeks, uh, and after that they start at one fifty, just depending on what you need. So. Uh, we don't include the cost of the touch-up because you might not need it, so we don't want to include it. So, because some places will include the touch-up cost in With the initial, the initial. Exactly. and so if you don't need a touch-up in six to eight weeks, then you don't need it. And I used to, I used to include it. It, it was, um, it was seven hundred dollars, and it was the initial appointment and the touch-up. But then I started to find people didn't even need a touch-up. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't want to charge someone for a service they don't need. Yeah. So we just charge per appointment. Okay, and then, so if they come back, like let's say they came every year, how much is the one year mark? Currently it's $250 okay. um, for the one year color boost. Now, Which, that's like, I feel like, because how much is a wax? Um, brow, brow wax, 44 44 So. But they, you still come in for your brow wax too. Oh, you do? Oh, because you still have hairs. Yeah, your hair, you, and then. everybody has asked that. Do I still need to come in for brow maintenance? And that, again, it depends. Because um, maybe now problem. you have a shape that you can follow with exactly. the so, so you some might people save have money. That. Yeah, exactly. Or some people, they'll still come in and we, it's just like normal eyebrows. Mm -hmm. So if you want to come in for brows, you can. You don't have to. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank it was you. so informative. I love having you. It was so fun. Have, it's always fun having you here. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you guys love this. And if you live in San Diego, come get your brows done with Kim. Come see me. They also offer amazing facial services. You have mm -hmm. Oxygeneo. Oxygeneo, Resinerate, custom facials. We customize everything. So um, definitely come see us for facials um, as well. Yeah. And lymphatic drainage. So Lots of lymphatic drainage. Yes. <laughs> we do it all. <laughs> it's the one-stop shop.